and suddenly while talking i felt something coming upon me and my head started heating up and i started losing vision i i fainted on the road only uh, thing that i was told by the doctors is that it is an autoimmune and if this doesn't stop or slow down you are headed for a kidney transplant that yes i'm i'm feeling much better on this diet than i used to feel earlier it was as if somebody had given me some elixir and i got a first taste of that and i must continue to do it to see what happens but india has been a meat eating country the biggest uh, literature that we have ayurveda biggest literature ever it's a classic has meat listed for all ailments where have all those texts gone and who has made them disappear there has been some sabotage at some level ira welcome uh, it's good to have you here can you share a little bit about your background if you don't mind Yeah hi Sean very pl- privileged to be here and what fun to have you on the same space uh, and screen as mine I am Ira or Ira as a lot of people call me Ira Sahai I'm based out of Mumbai and I'm a metabolic health coach I'm a member of dlife.in which is India's uh, largest low carb platform and the only award winning platform this is my bio in short very good and and I was I just did a they had a low carb event recently I I was I was one yeah. of the speakers in there as I recall quite impressive and typically when we think about India we don't really think about it low carb that's not it's probably unusual there but as you are very aware I'm sure India has a growing problem with diabetes cardiovascular disease and a host of other metabolic problems which are clearly occurring and it's good that you do that how did you get interested in this in the first place what made you decide I want to get into metabolism and become a metabolic coach Yeah, I, that's a very interesting question, Sean. And I have a media background originally, and I had a personal uh, incident with me, wherein I was uh, detected with a kidney condition in 2021, and basically that's how I came into this, and I wanted to help more people. We could go on in detail about it if you permit, or I can just stop here. Yeah, it'd be interesting. The kidney condition, because in fact, I did. I, I was doing a another event in the Philippines, a virtual event in the Philippines yesterday, and they have a really yes, I saw big that. problem yeah. with with kidney disease. Mm-hmm. Even though they're not, they don't have the obesity rates that we have, but they're seeing this metabolic damage very yeah. early, even in people that are relatively thin. We call them the so-called mm-hmm. tofi phenotype, or thin on the outside, fat on the inside type of thing. But well, so, you, did, were you developing like chronic renal insufficiency, which are or some other or maybe there was something else i think i remember hearing the story tell me what that was yeah okay so here goes the story i was as i said i was a media professional i'm an editor i was and i was working with with some of the better known names of indian print media and digital media so the story starts in 2021 when i was having a meeting and i stepped out of that meeting i was talking to a few people on the street who had also come down with me and suddenly while talking i felt uh, something coming upon me and my head started heating up and i started losing vision and before i could know it was a blackout and i fainted on the road i was lucky enough to not conk off in the middle of the road that was the sidewalk and people did not realize what had happened maybe 30 seconds or 60 seconds must have passed when they realized that i had fallen down and i was unconscious although i was hearing sound but it was I, limp basically i could not move or open my eyes anyways good sense prevailed and they got water for me and they sat me down and i was so shaken i still could not see properly or get up i had no energy i didn't know where that come where did that come from because all my life shon i had i've been an athlete i have been a trained classical indian dancer very active into sports and always exercising and very interested in in food science and stuff like that so i didn't know i had no history of illness nothing and this came as a shock so somehow i managed to come home and all i knew was as a layman was that salt and sugar and water would definitely help me and i'll see what i can do about it later so i i drank that and i slept i think i i must have slept 5 hours at the end of which i decided to call in my lab neighbors because i live by myself and they came and a doctor came and the thing she told me was my bp is dangerously low that is what i remember i was still reeling in and out of that blackout phase i was still not in control of my body and my mind i didn't know what was happening so that is what happened in 2020 that led me to where i am today how old were you at the time 
Sean, just one second. I wanted to add one bit here. I, the day this happened, I was supposed to travel to Bangalore. And actually, the entire treatment and the diagnosis of what actually got me was at a very elite hospital in Bangalore. Now, this happened on the 7th of October, 2021. And 9th of October, I was scheduled to travel. I reached Bangalore somehow and I went to the to the hospital and for three days, four days, they continuously kept testing me and they did everything from an eco to a scan to everything. And they finally zeroed in on the fact that I have something called membranous nephropathy, which is an autoimmune condition. And the further treatment or the guidelines for that were very ambiguous. That is the other part of the story you know, how there was nothing given to me or how that ambiguity was created. So far, so good. I know that I have a condition. and uh, But what do I do about it? So this is the next part of the story that brought me to where I am today. So everything was done in Bangalore and that's where I was hospitalized. And that was in 2021. Membranous nephropathy, apparently there's no cure for it, right? Yeah. So this is what we were told. There's no cure for membranous nephropathy. It is in inflammatory condition, some of the treatments that are at least used here in the U.S., corticosteroid drugs to drive down the inflammation, there are autoimmune suppressive drugs, and then also even some cytotoxic drugs like cyclophosphamide or cyclosporin or tacrolins, which are some of these often used in uh, transplants for, for anti-rejection drugs. So you get this disease, and I don't know if they told you that, but my understanding, or at least the, the sort of the Western medicine belief is this is an incurable disease. The only way to treat it is put you on these drugs and eventually your kidneys are going to feel, fail, your life expectancy is going to be decreased. So yeah. Were you told all that stuff or what did you learn about yes. that? Yes. Once they discovered that I have membranous nephropathy, began a very interesting story of inquiries. Uh, I was always interested in, in having a healthy body and like everybody else who's even slightly conscious and aware. So I started asking them, what is it and how can this be stopped? Because... Every time I met my doctors, they used to tell me this is third stage membranous nephropathy and the protein urea, which is the normal range is 50 to 100, was 7,635 mg per deciliter. So that was huge. And in the meanwhile, once this started, I started losing all my muscle that I had built all over these years. And I started losing bunches of hair. I had ball patches all over my head. And my skin had become loose and skeletal and bony because the entire protein was being drained. So there was nothing to hold on to my skin. So I was looking like maybe 70 year old. I didn't know what's happening. So I wanted to understand what this is. And the only thing that I was told by the doctors is that it is an autoimmune. And if this doesn't stop or slow down, you are headed for a kidney transplant. And... So what did they say? What are we going to do about it? Did they say this is how we recommend yeah. to treat this? Yeah. So my question definitely was, I was scared like hell. Anybody would be. And I wanted to know what I could do to prevent this because I had done nothing to get here. It was not a lifestyle taking for granted what you're eating, not exercising, nothing of those sort. So I wanted to know why I got here in the first place, to which I got no answer. And I wanted to know how I can reverse or go back or what is my destiny. I don't want to be limped for life. I don't know whether I'll survive the next year because you are telling me that there is no treatment for this. We may use steroids, but if steroids don't work, you are headed for a kidney transplant. And when is that was my question and to which they said it could be as soon as six months. So that was my condition then. And I badly wanted to know how I could slow this down, how I could reverse this. And Sean, they had no answers for that. I mean, we look up to doctors, we respect them. We want them to give us a direction. If you are telling me I have a certain condition, you should be able to tell me what can I do about it. If not medicine, then some diet, something has to be there. You cannot just say, oh, I raise my hands up in the air. No answers there. Not So that was apparently the situation I was in, I had nowhere to go. I had nobody to ask. The people that I trust who should be giving me the answers had no answer. Yeah, that's got to be a very scary 
place to be in. Hey, right? This disease hey. that is potentially okay. maybe going to take your life. You, know, you maybe need a kidney transplant, which has a lot of issues mm. with that as well, as yes. you're probably yes. aware. So what did you do at that point? You got your doctor say, and then many times they'll say, we don't know. We have no idea. It's idiopathic. We don't know why autoimmune diseases happen. We don't know why these things, it's bad luck. It's your genetics. It's some mm. witchcraft. We, we've got no clue, right? When Correct. The reality is it's pro- there probably is a reason. We just don't, we're not smart, yeah. smart enough to figure it out in many ways. Uh, yeah. So how did you, what was your, what did you do after you found out there's nothing they could basically do for you? Sean, I think it affected me uh, emotionally a lot than it affected me physically because to see yourself in the mirror, I hated myself. I didn't click a single picture of that time except for when I was hospitalized and I had swollen legs. I was 75 kgs at that time. I'm 56 now. 75 kgs and while I was in Bangalore and doing all those tests, I want to tell you, you would know, when I walked, I felt like there were packets of water stuffed inside my body and they moved as I walked because there was water retention. Before I fainted, I would want to come back to the first day. Before I had fainted or had a black blackout, my body had started swelling up with water and massive swelling that led to this uh, blackout. And what happened before uh, the swelling of of my limbs, especially the lower part, was the second dose of vaccination on the 30th of September. And I started filling in water into my in my body. And on the 7th of September, October, I blacked out. 9th of October, I go to Bangalore and this entire thing happens. So coming back to what did I do? So obviously, I had no answers from the doctors. And that was it was like a small child left on the highway, nowhere to go. And who's to answer my question? I'm, God forbid, I'm dying and I want to know something about my condition. How can I reverse it? You're telling me I'm headed for a kidney transplant. You give me something that can give me some solace or tell me how to reduce this, slow this down, other alternatives. So because I had no answer, the only protocol that was given to me, Sean, was less salt. And I wanted to scream and ask the doctor, is this a salt problem? And if I reduce my salt, am I going to reverse my condition? And I knew that was a very silly question, but then that was a very silly advice as well. So I started looking around and uh, I did not find much literature on, uh, on the specific membranous nephropathy, but I found a lot of literature on kidney condition. And long story short, The first person that I found across a series of researches and reading papers and stuff like that, because it was a do or a die moment for me. If I don't do something for myself, nobody else is going to do it for me. Everybody has thrown their hands up in the air. So across reading all those papers and researching, the first person that I came on to was you and your carnivore diet success stories. And I ha- and you have somebody listed there as Kelly and so many other people who had kidney conditions. And I only knew that if I am losing 7,635 mg per deciliter of protein urea, and I'm looking like this, I have to get it back into my body, common sense. I started looking for alternatives where I can increase the protein. So, your uh, carnivore diet community, and then Dr. Ken Berry, and in that order, Dr. Jason Fung and Shashi Kantayangar, Anup Singh, all of that. That's how I came here. So when I was looking for the only thing that made sense to me was that if I'm losing so much protein from my body that is making me look like a 70 year old, I should be able to put that protein back into my body to look better and to stop this hair fall. That was a dire uh, circumstance that was the first need of course what was happening otherwise froth in the urine and constantly having that feeling of blackout every time I stepped out of the house and stuff like that all besides that the common sense said that you have to put in the protein back into your body and that's how I was a vegetarian for a temporary period of time and I was a vegetarian around that time and I discovered that uh, Sourcing my protein from a vegetarian diet was becoming a bit of a task because I had to do take cottage cheese and hung curd and this and that. And I wanted to make it simpler. And that's how I 
started searching what has maximum protein, layman searches, but but very pointed searches in terms of my condition. So I came to your site and I read so many success stories and particularly the kidney conditions. And then I decided to go carnivore, go back to how I was eating for so many years and I had turned vegetarian, during which time I also had some dental issues, weight issues and plantar fasciitis. And once I turned carnivore, uh, which we will talk about after this, all of these conditions uh, went away. And the membranous nephropathy that I was detected with started showing great improvements uh, once I was on a carnivore diet. That's amazing. I think that one thing, because you mentioned you had lost muscle, you were just becoming skin and bones yes. more or less, yes. but filled with water, but you gained 20 kilos of excess water. That's yeah. 40, some, 40 some pounds for those people who don't understand kilos. That's a lot of weight, and I'm sure you're, you have a relatively small frame, I, I would imagine. That's just, you obviously in a very desperate situation. And you said, I'm, I'm going, you said you did vegetarian for a number of years, maybe 10 years or something like that prior yes, to this. Yes. But yes. before that, when you were younger, maybe you were eating more of a, a non vegetarian diet. Is that, yeah. is, that, is that true? Yeah. Sean, my, my, I come from a background. My dad is in films, and we always had uh, good food on the table. And my dad is a hardcore meat eater, and we've been brought up like that. And sometimes we do fall into the illusion of fads. And I was not very aware then, but I decided to experiment with a vegetarian diet, the Indian way, not the vegan diet, but the vegetarian diet with a bit of dairy also, vegetables and a bit of grains and all of that. But I was not eating meat. I did eat eggs, but I was not uh, focused on eating more protein. kind. Of. So I was doing a vegetarian diet and I didn't realize for 10 odd years, I was a vegetarian in between. Before that, a hardcore non-vegetarian, the way my dad ate, ate it. And within those 10 years, my dental issues persisted. In fact, they became, they started and they be, became worse. On a vegetarian diet, I am assuming it is because of that, excess carbs or whatever. And I had plantar fasciitis for many years, which now I don't have. And weight issues, of course, on a vegetarian diet, you are swaying less and more and less, doing all kinds of circus, but not counting calories, of course, but not quite there at any point of time. Even if you're there, you just fall off the wagon and just goes hay haywire. So I was a vegetarian. I had a couple of issues that had popped up, small issues, but they had popped up, which absolutely disappeared on a carnivore diet. When you obviously, and, and I see there's a growing carnivore movement within India, which is, you think, maybe one of the last places on, on planet Earth that that would occur, but it's occurring. And I think a lot of people are realizing there's such metabolic issues with this and, and, and other issues that are coming along. How did you, and, and I, I guess you said you're in Mumbai, and so I know there's different regions where meat eating is more accepted, perhaps the south of India, whereas in the north of India, perhaps it's more vegetarian based. How was, how did you decide, you said you're going to try this carnivore, how did that start for you? What did you use? What, what kind of food sources did you use? Did you use seafood, chicken, lamb, goat, maybe? I don't know. I know I know beef is off the menu in many cases, but how did you start your carnivore journey? Sean, I decided to go back to my roots the way I had been always eating. And I had seen my dad maintain a very uh, good body. He was also, also, what do you say, a wrestler as a hobby but he was more or less into in in films and that's why he maintained a very good body and the diet was primarily meat every day so i decided i was quite used to red meat which is lamb or goat so i decided to start with goat meat that's what i had been eating all my life i'm not a very chicken person but i i started with red meat and some seafood of course chicken was there and as i evolved on the carnivore diet because the effect started showing in 15 days I felt much more energetic. The blackout started going out. Now, this is the starting phase of the benefits of the carnivore diet. It took about a month and a half to fully realize that this is absolutely working for me. So the first things that went started uh, improving was the froth in the urine. That started going down considerably. And the face started lifting up. Of course, it was nowhere close to how I looked before that. But it started lifting up. It started firming up. The hair fall was lesser. The blackouts were less frequent. 
and I, I, very soon, maybe within 15 days, two weeks, I realized that yes, I'm, I'm feeling much better on this diet than I used to feel earlier. It was as if somebody had given me some elixir and I got a first taste of that and I must continue to do it to see what happens. And by the time all the research and everything suggested, I was only interested in one thing. I cannot do a protein, high protein diet on a vegetarian diet. People who do, do that have my respect. I cannot. It was too much work for me. So meat was the primary diet. And the first thing that started going off the plate once I started eating the meat was the grains that we are so used to eating in India. So yeah, you're right. We cannot eat without grains. The rice and the roti are probably 60-70% of the plate. And even if there are no rice and roti, the legumes, the pulses, the vegetables and everything. So it's probably 80% carbs, I would say. So protein deficient country or not aware of the importance of protein. So yeah, I started eating. Yeah. Sorry. I was yeah. going to say India definitely has a, a significant, I think something like 90% of Indians, irrespective of, of socioeconomic class, mm. failed to meet even the RDA of protein, which mm. is still very low. So that's when the statistics are out there. So there's definitely not a lot of protein yeah. in, in, the, in the standard Indian diet for sure. But um, okay, can continue on. So you, you started feeling better, which has got to make you feel good. <laughs> yeah. Sean, I had not, no inhibitions in starting a red meat diet because I'd already all, always been eating that. So I had dived into that. And around that time, I still had some grains, but then I felt I need to conk it off my plate right away because there's no need. I was feeling full. And the grains went first, the pulses, the legumes went uh, second. And all the brainwashing that we have, vegetables are important, fruits are important. I was amazed that I was doing absolutely the opposite of what we had been taught or the mainstream messaging is with regards to nutrition or a balanced diet, so to say. Here I'm taking a, a very unbalanced diet and my body is balancing itself so much better than it, it was balancing. It was balancing itself before. So the grains went, pulses, legumes went, vegetables went. And as I evolved in the carnivore diet a while back, I quit dairy as well. And now I have quit the eggs as well. Not that I won't have it, but I don't feel the need to because I'm so satiated with the red meat. And much like you do, in fact, today I was talking to somebody and saying we eat the same way, just the meat. So that's where I'm at. How? And have you reassessed because you have nephrotic syndrome you're losing all this protein has that been reassessed has someone checked your kidney function and where are you at with that now yes so in in 2022 again exactly after one year on the same date i was again in bangalore and i decided to go to the hospital and get myself checked because i was feeling so much better and the uh, guidelines from the doctor were keep checking yourself so that you know the numbers that it's not progressing so i had been checking myself all through that year so I, I landed up in Bangalore at the same hospital to the same doctor doing the same test. And amazed, Sean, that after all the checkups, I have the prescription where that same doctor writes, membranous nephropathy has gone into spontaneous remission. Yeah, this is, I, it probably would have been his first case ever. Perhaps. I, I bet, uh, I bet, yeah. So no evidence, of, so gone. No, no evidence of membranous nephropathy. You're no more swelling in the legs. Your hair is not falling out. Your muscle is Nothing. coming back. Your skin is normalized yeah. Yeah. Uh, within one year, which is... Which yes. Is in funny. fact, the changes started uh, showing up one and a half months down the line, carnivore. I started feeling better even earlier, but I noticed the changes, the hair fall reducing and everything else and the skin firming up. It took a while. I'm still not 100% the way I started I, before the condition but I'm 99% there. So all these changes happened within a year and I kept checking my numbers that started going down. And I think within three or four months, I was almost on the verge of normalcy, but I still kept checking myself, consulting doctors wherever I was. So I showed my reports, did the 24-hour urine uh, protein urea and everything. So from 7,635 mg per deciliter to reaching the place where the doctor has to write spontaneous remission. Although I didn't understand what spontaneous was because I had done everything that I could in, in this one year, but I appreciate, I respect him. I smile, but thank you, but I did it. Oh, yeah. 
obviously eating an all meat diet in India has got to be perceived as unusual. I would imagine friends, family, probably has saw many of them probably saw you at your worst when you were in, in, in danger of losing your kidney and needing a kidney transplant. They would have had to have seen the transformation. What has been their thought about it? Do they think you're just crazy for eating all meat, or they, or do they, are they supportive, or how has that gone to the people around you? Mm, Sean, they saw me uh, undergoing the kidney biopsy, which also, by the way, was done. I was at that stage, and I know how I felt. I had never been to a hospital. I have never been sick, and this was worth shattering for me to faint on the road, and then to be discovered and to told and to be told that I am going to be having a kidney transplant, maybe needed six months down the line, and they had seen me, seen my morale go down. So after the biopsy, also, by the way, they said the same thing that I may need a kidney transplant, and that could be as soon or as late as six months. So there is no way to stop it. They could try steroids, but they're not sure. So once I switched on to the carnivore diet, of course, I didn't tell my parents upfront that I'm doing a hundred percent carnivore, because that goes not because they're opposed to meat, but that goes against the mainstream messaging of the uh, nutritional protocol given given to us by the various associations and doctors. Meat is bad for the kidneys, and if you have a kidney symptom, if you have a kidney ailment. and of the third stage of very dire circumstance it's very difficult to explain to people that i'm putting myself on a fully meat diet because that goes against the medical protocol of course i didn't tell them but i started familiarizing them with what i'm going to be doing and they were open to meat but they never imagined in their lives that i could be on a diet but i would where i would be eating only meat they have now settled down with that but when i started out they were they didn't know how to react because that was not the way people are eating around us there has to be some rice there has to be some roti some dal some this and that and here is somebody just putting maybe 400 grams of meat in in one meal on her plate that's it so i would say yes that's it <laughs> so that's the story i've been there many times <laughs> let me I ask know. you I I'm sorry. You said you were in the media. You were a, a, yeah. maybe a well-known media personality or yeah. something. I don't know if it's print or or video or. Are you still doing that? And no, I am not because once I had this membranous nephropathy, I have gone through this step by step. Ah, uh, the decision, as I said, on evolving on the carnivore journey. Sean, I'm very inspired by you. You already know that, and everybody. I think I've talked about you in my first podcast as well with Shashi Kanthengar, and I've written about that on Twitter. but evolving on the carnivore diet and giving up things on my own because once you evolve and you would know this the grains go the legumes and pulses go the dairy even the dairy i still have people i still have my own clients also who are stuck with dairy but i found myself giving them up very easily in fact i would question myself why am i do why am i eating this and this is how i evolved on a diet like this where i am now on meat and salt largely but adding a few spices like turmeric and stuff and black coffee through the day so fatty meats and black coffee yeah india is known for its spices it's a very spicy rich cuisine and so i would imagine for a lot of people they'd say not being not consuming a lot of that or not consuming you said like the different dairy paneers and all the things that they have on the dairy in there would have been a challenge for a lot of people because that's where a lot that's where a lot of the protein in fact comes in in, yes. in, in vegetarian it's almost mostly dairy have you had much in the way of pushback i know you you've been on twitter uh, maybe you're talking about it in in, in india uh, you know on, on different media channels has there been a lot of pushback saying when you're you're doing the wrong thing and this is bad or anything along those lines i think shawn i am a case study where people cannot afford to push back because I was in a situation where I had no medical protocol, no nutritional advice given. I was being pushed to a kidney transplant, and here I reversed my condition on a pure carnivore diet. So there's no argument there. I'm sorry, and there is no pushback. Of course, you will always have virtue signaling from people who are anti-meat. Uh, it happens everywhere, not just in India, but everywhere. If you tell somebody you are having two meats or one meat, and that's just meat. so they have all kinds of questions how can somebody eat meat every day in and out but i quite enjoy um i meet the seafood the red meat uh, the mince this that the pushback really is not there because people know my case in fact they appreciate it 
and they are amazed and i have already done two three podcasts and on this and i've talked about it so they have somebody who's a real life case is a real life example who went against the medical protocol and showed results so there is no argument there for a pushback in fact i try to convince them and a lot of things that uh, i think people already know by now a lot of people who are uh, aware about nutrition and health they know you they know dr kenberg and so many other people and it makes us it makes it very easy for me to convince them that here are people uh, who have done it and here are people the experts these are the doctors and i'm a real life example a real case there's no question of a pushback because i would not anybody told me any other wise i have proof i am an evidence that i can i reversed a kidney condition that was a third stage membranous nephropathy headed for a kidney transplant on a fully carnivore diet so i am sorry i i cannot be pushed back <laughs> good for you for sticking in that are you finding there are people interested in this particular situation in india are, are you seeing more and more people doing carnivore i know india's got billion 1.4 billion people yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of people there but like i said i'm aware of several people in india that are doing carnivore are you meeting up with those people or is yeah, it a lot chan and in my own practice as a metabolic health coach and i tend to have some success more success with autoimmune conditions because i was an autoimmune patient so i know i have done the journey and i can understand every bit of it so i have had great success with people who are specially autoimmune and all of them are primarily vegetarian and today they are all carnivores i have put them all on carnivore and the results are there for them to see and i'm i keep putting testimonials i think i'll do that more often where they are saying that i don't know what i was eating all these years and i never want to go back so people who are in dire circumstances who are facing conditions or who have obesity or even type 2 diabetes or stuff like that i have people approaching me all the time if if this can be reversed and the first thing that i ask them not that it cannot be done on a vegetarian diet but the first thing i ask them is that whether or not they eat meat and if they do it is so much easier for them to reverse get better understand what i'm saying so i think people are understanding now and if i talk to somebody i have a case i am an evidence i am an example i think it makes it much more easier for me to convince people and they are waking up to the benefits of meat largely it's still it still take time but they are waking up to meat do That's you know many do you know many other folks in your circle that are diabetic is it because we hear that diabetes is about 11% of the population of india over 100 million oh. people have diabetes now I mean, yes are you seeing a lot of those folks and and how are they receiving this message yeah uh, in fact a lot of my clients as well uh, people in my family uh, people around me uh, because they've seen me and they have metabolic syndromes or metabolic conditions and diabetes and stuff like that they are very open to doing anything i have four five people from my family forget the people uh, that i deal with professionally but my family who were reluctant or probably over scared not reluctant but scared to go on a carnivore diet and they had conditions like thyroid uric acid and uh, diabetes obesity of course and they have all reversed on that i have posted some uh, feedback reviews on twitter i i think i'll do it more often but wonderful results and they are now open to it uh, people are diabetic and they are understanding that this is a diet that can uh, put the condition into remission much easily than anything else there's an alternate way of uh, healing and getting better than medicines you had mentioned when you start out having with, with goat as your primary red meat source how difficult is it to source meat in india if i were to go there would i have a difficulty finding carnivore products is it is it not is it, is at it very all not, or is, it's not no bad? not at all in fact red meat is very easily available yeah your beef may not be that easily available but it is india has not banned beef but yeah there are some virtue signaling around it but you get lamb and goat meat very easily you get chicken and all kinds of seafood fatty fish eggs and various kinds of eggs and sweet water fish everything very easily just for beef maybe you will have to try a bit maybe go to the main market or something where they have more butchers and stuff like that you'll find it there but goat meat and lamb meat it's it's easily sourced yes by indian standards it's a bit bit expensive but i would say 
that instead of sourcing 10 things while i was eating a normal vegetarian diet i would source dal i would source rice vegetables fruits this that i am just buying meat for so for, it's uh, kind of far more simpler sorted cheaper time saving and i like it yeah many people don't realize that but in india you have the most cows of any nation on the planet there if you include the buffalo yeah. there's 300 million head of cattle there yes in the united states we have 95 the second biggest mm -hmm. is brazil at about 225 so india has the largest number of yeah. cows in the entire world which is an interesting and it's thing. very strange shawn that that beef is exported india is one of the largest beef exporters if i'm not wrong but beef sourcing in india is a problem you would get it i'm not saying you would not get it you would get it easily as well but not randomly maybe i'll have to go to the main market or something with a lot of butchers but this is quite uh, quite a paradox that we are the biggest beef suppliers and beef sourcing is a problem in india so. yeah i just saw a statistic that in the united states every year we slaughter 34 million head of cattle but in india they, they slaughter 38 million head of cattle yep. you actually slaughter more cattle in india than we yep. do in the united states which yep. is i think most people would be shocked to exported out, yes so. So it's there. Have you had any downsides? Have there been any negatives that have happened to you either either physically, I guess socially, I guess, with going on this diet? Has there been any downsides to it? No, a lot of downsides. I saved my life. So the jokes apart, I'm looking much better. I've lost weight. I'm much more confident. I'm much more energetic. I save time cooking. I don't cook beyond 10 minutes. You and I eat the same thing. I'll say it again. I'm very proud of that. 10 minutes is all I take to cook. So I, these are the downsides if you think they are downsides. But I think miracle. It's just a miracle that you could live such a sorted life. You are having time to focus on your work, on yourself, on your gym, exercise or whatever you are doing. You're not thinking about food all the time. So you are doing one food and you're cooking say three, four things. For cooking those three, four things, you're using 20 ingredients. And once you're done, you're thinking about food again. And then the next day, I'm not on that trip. I uh, take 10 minutes to cook. No downsides, except that I have bettered every condition. I have reversed my membranous nephropathy. My kidneys are mine. I, I have not exchanged them. And I feel so much better, so much lighter, uh, so much uh, everything, Sean. It, it's a miracle diet, I would say in all seriousness. How about the mental health? Did you notice, I guess being diagnosed with something that like that might be depressing for most people. I know it would be for me. Yeah. And some people will state that when they go on a carnivore diet or even let low carb diets in general, in many cases, they'll notice better cognitive ability, maybe better moods. Did you notice any changes in yes. your mental yes. function? Yes. I used to have headaches a few times, but they were not migraine, but I did have I have not had headaches since long or even if I have that's slightly because of probably going out too much in the sun or could be a, a first, or any other trivial issues but not the way I used to have. The sleep has become so much better. I say I sleep like a dog. So once I'm off to bed like I don't wake up and earlier I used to keep waking up and stuff like that. The sleep has better. I'm feeling much more energetic and much more alive mentally. So I, I can say there's no brain fog, as they say, and agility and uh, sharpness. And you feel so light in your head. So every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, it's been such a wonderful journey to see a version of yourself so much improved, so much better. You said you'd gone to Bangalore. I think it was called Bangalore. I think it's another word. Yeah, they changed um, the name. Yeah. They um, doing these things and you saw the doctor there. Did he was he aware of your dietary changes? Does any of the physicians know that you're eating all meat and do they have a comment? Yeah. That? So when I got my test done after a year, that was in 2022, the doctor was I think he, his pen was shaking while writing membranous nephropathy has gone into spontaneous remission because the protocol given to me was less salt. That is imagine that's a nutritional protocol. So anyways, when he wrote that, he was stunned and he did ask me, uh, what have you done? So I said to him, I said, I did some research and you would be amazed to know that if I had asked you this, you would have first thing you would have told me was don't eat meat. Eat meat is dangerous for kidney and for kidney condition like yours, where, where you are on the third stage of membranous nephropathy. But guess what? 
I put myself on a purely carnivore diet mm-hmm. and now I'm a full carnivore and I eat only meat and I've reversed my condition on meat. I went on meat very soon after I was diagnosed with this. So he was stunned, shocked, couldn't believe because I think he's not at fault. He's been taught that meat is dangerous. He's just parroting that narrative. And he said, okay, whatever you've been doing uh, is very good. Keep doing. But then this is what I know that meat is dangerous in a kidney condition like you. So I would never advise. Maybe that'll change. And um, yeah. do you, so how do you, well, let me ask because we're getting lower on time here. How do people find out about you in India? Are you, do you have a digital pr- pl- practice online? People just come to you digitally. Do you meet them in person or how does that work? You said you do medical yeah. coaching. So I am, I'm, my, I'm present on the social media. I'm present on Twitter as the Ira Sahai or Loka Bhida. And that's how people come to me. Of course, they come to me offline as well. But a lot of people reach out to me after they see my interactions on Twitter and they know my work. Mostly, yes, they do come to me from there. My handle is that. You'd mentioned your parents were, you know, your father particularly was a, was a proponent of meat eating. Yeah. Um, has your family, any of any members of the family or friends adopted a more meat heavy diet since yes. your experience? Quite a lot of them, as I said a while back, four or five people from my family are on a fully carnivore diet. And and these were the people who were vegetarians largely Uh, in India. Even the meat eaters would eat meat uh, twice a week, maybe three, four pieces a week. That's about 100, 150 grams, 200 grams. From there, today they are chomping on meat and they have reversed their thyroid, hypothyroid. They have reversed the uric acid. They are on remission, on way to remission, their type 2 diabetes. Obis had lost eight kgs in in about uh, two months, two and a half months, and I have the feedback as well. Maybe I'll post it tomorrow. And so it's amazing that people who never believed meat could heal this way, and they were very vocal about vegetables and everything after seeing me and after getting themselves on this diet and seeing the changes, they've stuck on to it. So the word is definitely spreading in the family, friends, and everywhere. Why is it? Do you think that? There's such a prevalence of vegetarianism. I know I think the population about twenty five percent are vegetarian, and there's but even the people that eat meat generally eat a very small amount in India, something like five kgs per year, which is very, one of the lowest. I think Bangladesh is the only country that consumes less meat than India does. Why do you think that is? What is because I I know historically there was a period of time where India or that subcontinent, Asian subcontinent in this area was meat eating, but then they adopted this sort of more vegetarian base. What is that all due to down to religion, or what is the what, what is keeping people? Oh, there are multi. There, there are absolutely multi-layer uh, issues. Sean, uh, India was a meat eater, uh, meat eating country. Uh, there were sections of people who were comfortable eating vegetarian uh, food for whatever religious region uh, reasons or personal preferences. But if you are talking about um, religion and spirituality, I have a background in spirituality as well. And the biggest text on uh, you know on medicine, uh, Ayurveda. It has meat listing for every condition and I have a copy of that. So somewhere down the line, this was all diluted and then the green revolution came. Carbs are cheap and somehow the entire media projection plus the religious virtue signaling. I'm not saying some people are authentically vegetarians and they eat very frugally, which is fine. But if you are on a high carb diet, influenced by all these things, you're going to end up in a place like this, so it's multi-layer. The court is interfering, if I know correctly, and I'm I, I informed, I am usually. The courts are interfering in animal sacrifice, which is given at the temples. Because what vegetarianism or veganism and all these, I would call veganism a fad diet. People have been influenced by virtue signaling. People have been influenced by media. People have been influenced by the fact that this is violence and vegetarianism is non-violent. So a very, I would say, sadist kind of virtue signaling where you don't know signs. And uh, somehow it has taken over. But India has been a meat-eating country. The biggest uh, literature that we have, Ayurveda, biggest literature ever, it's a classic, has meat listed for all ailments. Where have all those texts gone? And who has made them disappear? There has been some sabotage at some level 
and uh, i think the companies have come in and the packaged food and everything you have tv you have uh, the lowest uh, data uh, uh, pricing in india so people are always connected to their mobiles and the mobiles are showing them commercials that they want to sell so that you know who benefits the big pharma and you know the entire jig is there so i think it's that but we have been a meat eating country and we have evidence of uh, india being a meat eating country Yes, it's interesting you make the, you talk about the Ayurvedic sort of stuff, and I went to about when I was in Malaysia. I went to somebody sent me one just for just to try it out, and he did an Ayurvedic exam of me and told me maybe I should be vegetarian. But yeah. I had the lap. In, in the in the in the in the process of the discussion, he was a, he was a practitioner. He was a, I guess a physician or, or you know the equivalent there. He was telling me that he was complaining that he was B twelve deficient, and I said, "There's an answer to that." <laughs> I thought it was yeah. kind of humorous that, that he was in there trying to convince me to be vegetarian for you know because yeah. of my, I guess you know, the, the chakras or something. I don't know. I can't remember what, what sort of fire one it was. But anyway, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, do you uh, foresee um, a time where you will not do this diet? Are you pretty sold on it? That this is the way you're going to continue on, or do you think you're going to add things back in, or what are your thoughts on that? No, uh, regards the carnivore diet. Yes. Yes, I am pretty sure I can bet on that, and that I would never go back to eating the way I was because you cannot expect different results if you go back to doing the same things again. Now that, this forget the membranous nephropathy, but I did have a, a, a dental issue. I did have plantar fasciitis that was very bad, and uh, weight issues as well. and these were besides uh, the mem- membranous nephropathy the membranous nephropathy itself was cured forget that even my uh, the way i feel now is something that i had never felt before and i love this diet i would never go back come what may i just love it uh, you never count calories you feel so light you feel so agile so energetic uh, sorted uh no time uh, uh, is wasted in cooking just one ingredient done so order keep ordering meat and uh, make it the way you want so i quite love it so i am off eggs also now of course i do have eggs once in a while but i'm i can say that it's more or less a lion diet do you ever go to a restaurant uh and and if so Can you get food that you would be appropriate that would be appropriate for you, or is that impossible? Yes, if I choose to go to a restaurant, if ever that happens, usually I finish my meals at twelve p.m. and four p.m. So I have this four four hour eating window. But supposing there is an occasion where I do have to go, I instruct the cook to make the meat and butter, and use no binders and nothing, just meat and butter and some spices maybe. So it's easy, but I try to. Sp- to take my dinner early or however better i can or the best i can manage if i have to go out so it's not an issue and you mentioned turmeric as a spice you sometimes consume are there any other spices that you find that are that are that, that you tolerate well that are there in india because i know there's so many spices to choose yeah from. india is a land of spices and there are so many things that uh, even the dry spices they add a lot of aroma and flavor and fragrance to the food but if you're looking for that you can use that I'm not looking for that, and I incidentally also cook in tallow. At one point of time, I was cooking in ghee and butter, and I wanted to evolve to a point where, on an elimination diet, I can eliminate the last of things and have just one thing on my plate: the ultimate elimination in the elimination diet. So I stopped cooking in ghee, and I started making my own tallow butter, and I cook in that. That's it. You mentioned ghee. Ghee is something that is traditionally Indian for many years, but I think it's being replaced with largely by palm oil. Is that what you've seen? Is that as ghee largely been replaced by yes. palm oil over there? Yeah, there was a time, Sean, when uh, people would not uh, cook except in ghee, and uh, once the TV came and everything came, and I think this started somewhere around the fifties or sixties, and that's where we also see the rise in diabetes gradually and every marker going up. to a point that largely we are a metabolically unhealthy country so ghee is being replaced if you go into the interiors or the villages the cheapest of oil is being used a lot of seed oil is being used and i think that is one reason one major reason uh, besides the high carb and low protein seeds oil are one of the major culprits why we are seeing the, the metabolic epidemic in india 
and it's very difficult because you have commercials coming on tv shawn saying it's heart healthy so you would know the history of crisco and the equivalent of that came in india in the form of dalda and rath which were crisco was a shortening and these were kind of palm oil and some vanaspati they called it i don't know what it was but it was all crap and imitated ghee flavors so that's how the corruption started the manipulation started and then every oil is heart healthy every oil is this or that so i think media is a big culprit in in bringing these things to the household and if you go into the interiors ghee is not used even if you go to the cities ghee is not used in the main cooking it may be used for a few special dishes or some people may use it more than others or more frequently but ghee is not the main medium of cooking till uh, you realize what you are doing wrong in taking seed oil in taking high carbs and then when the switch happens everything is eliminated and sorted out and the grains go out and the vegetable oils go out and stuff like that then the revolution really happens but until then it's either mustard oil or any kind of vegetable oil that's being largely used in indian households yeah you mentioned the media the, the media company major media companies i'm sure it's no different in india are owned by the same people that own many of these ultra processed food companies and they yeah. just kind of support their own this mm-hmm. feedback in each other and that's the message they get is to eat this sort of highly processed food it's quote unquote heart healthy or whatever they want to tell yeah. but it's actually and they own the pharmaceutical companies too and so it all works for a very nice You know what's very healthy. interesting Sean I always ask my people who come to me uh, and argue against meat I'll give you a very interesting a uh, conversation that I had with somebody and he was like India is largely a vegetarian country and meat is violence and stuff like that My only remark to him was if India is such a largely vegetarian country and if you are eating a balanced diet and you say indian diet is the most balanced and it has everything could you please explain to me how you became the diabetic capital of the world and you are blaming it on meat imagine this is the kind of virtue signaling and the chaos that people have when it comes to meat eating nutrition and everything in general virtue signaling basically Yeah, there's no better <laughs> way to refute meat meat is causative for metabolic yeah. disease or diabetes in in India where they eat a very tiny amount of meat and and yet they have That's my argument. That's my argument. Yeah. If you're eating such a healthy diet and a balanced diet, please explain to me these numbers. I would thank you for this. Uh we're running out of time. Your story is is quite quite amazing and hopefully you'll continue. I'm sure you'll inspire thousands if not tens of thousands of people in India with your story and hopefully we'll You know, over time we'll see a shift to where people get healthier because we've got so many unwell and sick people and, and it's not getting better it's getting worse. So thank you for your time. I uh, remind us again where to find you on social media. I think you said low carb healer on Twitter. Yes, low so. carb healer and the era sahai is my handle. Sean, before we leave, can I just ask you one question? I'm sure people would be watching this. I will reverse the role. Could you just explain dairy how how important or unimportant it is on a carnivore diet? I have been arguing with people this entire day and I thought I would ask you today. Yeah, dairy is one of those things where you, you know again I, I'm just going off the experience that I have and seen uh many do better removing dairy from their diet for various reasons. Dairy of course is a, is a rich source of calcium. One of the one of the criticisms of a carnivore diet is can you get enough calcium in there? I think you can even sans dairy. The reasons being that we know that calcium absorption goes up with higher protein and so you probably extract more calcium out of your out of the diet meat does have some calcium in it and uh, it's not necessary to consume dairy i do i consume dairy occasionally i do occasionally but many times i feel better when out without it so i feel my best basically just on straight kind of i feel i bulk up when i eat dairy i would very interested to know i would be very interested to know if you feel the same quitting dairy before and after i lean down considerably Yeah. If we look at the purpose of dairy, it's to put on size and that's why dairy is, you know, that's why we what, what mammals do. I mean, we consume it's a very high quality source of protein and there are some decent fats in there. But at the same time for some people there is an inflammatory component and yeah. there's, a, there's obviously a number of people that are either lactose intolerant or they're they're sensitive to some of the proteins in dairy. So you just have to be and and, and remember dairy is is multifaceted. Like you said ghee is different than butter. You know, we got yeah. clarified ghee, clarified the solids are removed in ghee and and so there's different forms of dairy so you might tolerate some people may need to exclude it completely some people need to exclude certain types of dairy i think again all things being equal i think most people particularly people that are dealing with diseases particularly like inflammatory autoimmune diseases tend to better do better or even if they want to lose weight 
tend to do better when they remove dirt from the diet. So that's been my, my observation. Maybe once you're healed and you're feeling good and all the inflammation is going on, then maybe a little bit of dairy is, is yeah. tolerated. So that's, that's yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that insight. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm going to shut it down. Thanks. But we got another one of these at 1:30 today. All right. Thank you so much. This is a thank wonderful story. I can't wait to, to share this with everybody. And I appreciate it. keep up the good work. Keep spreading the message because this is something that. And if I ever get to India, <laughs> oh, you're to, most you'll, you'll have to show me where to go eat because oh, I, definitely I that's a promise. That's a promise because I know what you mean. And before we go, Sean, just one thing. I know you've done a podcast with D Life before as well. I, that was three years back. It would be my greatest pleasure to again do a podcast with you. Oh, of course, yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Just, uh, send you. me a message on Twitter or something like yeah. that, and we'll, send we'll do that. Okay? Yeah. All right, guys, I gotta go. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Have a great rest of your day.